Hey everybody, JRSPC back with another video and today we're checking out a complete set again. I did a few of these uh, videos going over some complete sets for people who just wanted to look at them and I had pretty good success and people enjoyed them and they asked me to do more. So here we are. This is actually a pretty awesome set. This is the 1993 Topps Black Gold set and it's a beautiful set i i opened it up i'll explain everything in a minute uh i sleeved everything so on and so forth and i just wanted to show it to you guys before i went ahead and priced everything and put it in my boxes for my shows but these came in four different little packs um you would have to get a card i believe if i remember correctly that you would send in the tops and then they would send you the set uh and it may have been the whole set or it may have only been like one of the four i can't remember how it actually worked i'm sure you can go online and look it all up but uh, they came in uh, winner A, winner B, winner C, winner D. And that um, made up the whole set. Uh, the header card on each one of the four sets has all the cards on one. Um, just here, as you can see. Uh, and then it's got the individual cards of each of them uh, after that. But So anyways, let's just get on with the video. And this will probably be pretty quick. But we're going to go through it and let you guys take a look at this awesome, awesome set. So there's that first card there, the winner A header card. Uh, these are here are really fun to get graded. Uh, they they carry some decent value in a PSA 10, um, and you know they they started making these right here, and I believe it's was it this year or last year's tops as an insert. But here they are. Uh, here's the Will Clark card, very cool. Here's the back of the card, pretty cool card right there. Got a little write up on them, obviously. It's got the black gold card number, nice little picture there. That's that. Uh, there's the Barry Bonds, very nice Barry Bonds card. But these are just, these were so cool back in the day, man. When, when you get a hold of these right here, they were just like the cat's meow, you know. Barry Larkin is a Hall of Famer. Ray Lankford, and these were just basically the best players on the teams, essentially. Um, Eric Karros right there, real good ball player, rookie of the year. Uh, Tony Gwynn, Hall of Famer. Marquis Grissom, he was a great one for the Expos back in the day. Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer. The line of the shields, he was great back in the day. Uh, Andre Dawson, the Hawk, he was obviously a great slugger back in the day. This is kind of toward the end of his career. I think he played till about 97, I think. Finishing up, I think, with the Marlins, if I remember correctly. Uh, Darren Dalton, he was a great switch inning catcher. Passed away a while back. And then that was set A. And here's B. There's the cards on top. I'll just get right past that because you can't see nothing anyways. Uh, there's Andy Van Slyke. I uh, picked up a really cool Andy Van Slyke this weekend. I did the Boise card show. I didn't get a chance to do a video because that show is so incredibly busy. They do it once every two months. It's a one-day show. It's the only card show in Boise, and it is a packed house. And I literally had people at my table the entire, entire day. I never had a moment where there wasn't people at my table, which I am not complaining about. And this went all the way from before the show started because it was in a hotel. So I had hotel guests walking by coming in. All the way until after the show was over, I had people at my table, and it was wonderful. Anyways, I couldn't get around to do a video, so I am sorry about that. I'll be in Denver this weekend. I'll try to do a video there, but picked up a very cool Andy Vance like card. I'll show it in a future video here. Uh, there's nice Ozzy Smith. Sorry I'm talking so much. I just drank a big cup of coffee, and the caffeine has kicked in. Lee Smith. I'll tell you a funny story about him sometime, too. Actually, I'll just tell it right now. So I was talking to... Um, uh, I was a long time ago. I was in New York. I was at Crown Plaza show down in Queens, uh, and Lee Smith was there signing autographs. And then I went. I was talking to some of the other players and that were there signing autographs. And somebody told one of the guys told me that Lee Smith um, had a bunch of mistresses in all the different towns. And he says that he would call his wife Babe. He never called his wife by his first name. He only called her Babe because he would always call all of his mistresses babe as well and that way he would never accidentally call his wife by one of his mistresses names he called all the girls babe kind of a horrible story but it's just kind of what went on what went on and what still probably goes on where these guys have you know groupy women in every city that they go in when they're on the road but anyways that's a fun Lee Smith story uh, I say fun not that I'm advocating cheating on your spouses but it's just a funny story that I was told so Gary Sheffield, one of the best, probably would definitely be a Hall of Famer if he didn't have so, so many steroid scandals. Ryan Sandberg, another one of the best second basemen of all time, next to like Jeff Kent. 
Uh, Bip Roberts, Terry Pendleton used to sign through the mail pretty good. Joe Oliver, old catcher for the Reds. Fred McGriff, new Hall of Famer right there. Very cool. Greg Maddox, the professor. Larry Walker, he signed a card for me through the mail. Wrote, he signed a rookie card for me, actually, and wrote Swing Hard and uh, signed it. It's really awesome. I love it. It's a great addition to my uh, through the mail PC. Here's set C. We got Cecil Fielder, the man who hit, is that 51 home runs in 1990, I believe? It was 51, I think. I could be wrong. Could have been 50. I think it was 51, though. Uh, after I got drafted by the Blue Jays, played for a minute, uh, then went off, played in Japan, and came back, and was a slugger after that. Uh, fun fact about him, him and his son have exactly the same number of career home runs. Dennis Eckersley, Mike Devereaux, good old player back in the mid-90s. Uh, Roger Clemens, the Rocket, i always going to get my vote to be in the Hall of Fame. Joe Carter, uh, hero of the 93 World Series. Uh, great player for a little while. Had a good stint in the late 80s, early 90s, where he was a real stud. Uh, Carlos Baerga, uh, I believe he was a good switch-hitting second baseman back in the day. I think he was a switch hitter. But he was a good ball player, played for the Mets for a little while. Brady Anderson hit a handful of home runs every year, and then all of a sudden, in 97, he hits 50 home runs. So they're thinking possible steroid use by him, too, for that one year. Uh, Roberto Alomar, really good ball player. Uh, very disrespectful, spit in the face of an umpire a long time ago. Uh, hopefully you guys like all these little fun facts about these players. I'm just a big, giant vessel of useless knowledge when it comes to sports and baseball. But hopefully you guys like it. There's the best card in the set, the Ken Griffey Jr. Very cool. Sells for okay money in a 10. Thought about getting it graded. It's a little off center, top to bottom. No point in getting this graded if it's not going to get a 10. It's a little off left to right too, but definitely more top to bottom. Uh, but still a very cool early Griffey card. Juan Gon, one of the best RBI hitters back in his day. Uh, he was one of those guys that they thought was going to really challenge Hack Wilson's all-time or all all-time season uh, RBI leader. Anyways, Travis Fryman, another great ball player, very quiet, under the radar player, but he was very good back in the day for a little while. Here's set D. We got Frank, the Big Hurt Thomas, one of the best of the 90s for sure. Uh, Mickey Tuttleton, he's another good, I think he was a switch hitter too. Really good catcher, uh, power hitter, probably on steroids back in the day too. Kirby Puckett, great ball player, uh, career cut short due to getting hit in the eyeball with a, with a pitch and end up, end up causing him to get glaucoma, end up passing away of a stroke at a young age. Mark, Big Mac McGuire, there's a real nice card right there. Nice early one. When he got the hair growing out, uh, man, I just remember he was such a stud. <laughs> uh, Edgar Martinez, one of the best DHs of all time and a Hall of Famer. Black Jack McDowell kind of reminds me of like the wild thing from uh, Ricky Vaughn from uh, Major League. He always reminded me of him. Kenny Lofton probably should be in the Hall of Fame. One of the greatest leadoff hitters of the 90s. Uh, Pat Listash, he was a flash in the pan. Big prospect back in, I believe, 1992. Uh, rookie cards were selling for about a dollar or two, which was big money back then for a rookie. Uh, he didn't make it very far, but he does sign through the mail last time. Brian Harper, this is not Bryce Harper's dad. Uh, decent catcher, had a nice long career with the Twins. Big Dave Winfield also played for the Twins after he left the Yankees. This is toward the very end of his career uh, when he played for the Blue Jays. And Robin Ventura, the man who learned the hard way that you do not, you do not charge the mound on this guy right here because you'll get you'll get thrown into a headlock like a steer headlock and then you're going to get punched in the face anyways um that, that's that set right there guys hopefully you enjoyed this video not a real big set but it is a pretty awesome iconic and nostalgic set and that'll do it for today you guys have a great rest of the day don't forget to leave a like if you liked the video if you didn't like the video you don't have to worry about that like but if you want to see more of these uh, complete set videos, let me know in the comments below and we will get more of them for you. Alrighty, later.